Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert and you join me in the hallowed halls of Jigsaw 24 in Soho in London. Very, very lucky today to have joined Ian Duncan from Jigsaw uh, and we're going to look at this baby. This is the highly coveted, highly awaited Pro Tools dock from Avid. These are a very rare beast at the moment. Um, Ian, thanks so much for taking the time out to show us around this thing. So. Um, over to you, show us what it can do. I will do, thank you very much James. <laughs> so first of all, what we've got here is an integration of hardware and the uh, Avid Pro Tools control app. So at the moment, what you need to do to get this to function on your system, if you're not familiar with the Pro Tools control app, is you need Yukon control version 3.4. There it is. Which we can see here, which if you look down in the section of hardware, control devices, we have now towards the bottom the dock and its various areas of soft key control. Cool. So that activates the dock itself. You also have the uh, iPad connectivity, which if anyone's familiar with the iPad uh, control software at the moment, it's the same thing. It's just that you now you've got tactile control over all of those functions. So if we look at the Pro Tools control app, uh, we have the very familiar pages where you have your mixer, your tracks. Uh, the additional pages that have been added since 1.06 are channel and the soft keys uh, page, which I'll come to in a little bit more detail in a second. So first of all, if we look at tracks, uh, we have a very, very familiar layout for any of those that have used uh, the Avid S6. If you haven't, then this is a good step up to get used to how to use one. So we have the tracks color coded that match the tracks in Pro Tools, all separated down. Uh, a new feature as well with this version of the iPad control is you now have uh, the option uh, in tracks view to display breaks on track color. Before it was just this. So you have all your tracks displayed together like that, which can be a little bit messy, even though you can get more on the screen. Uh, so now you can go into tracks view and separate by color. Now I like that. Personally, that, that, makes it a little bit easier to yeah, see, doesn't definitely. it? And navigate. So then you can focus on a track. I'll take you now into the hardware a little bit more. So if you go to uh, here, my selection of A um, effects, I now have an attention fader, uh, which will control whichever track I have selected in this window. So an automatic attention. Uh, this then opens up the channel page for that channel. So again, we have a kind of universe bar up here, which again matches the colors of Pro Tools, whatever you've got running. And then you have a secondary uh, layer of tracks, very similar to the S6, the way the home screen works on that page. Again, familiarity with the S6 with this software, where the, um, the home screen on the S6 has options to drag down uh, your dynamics, EQ, inputs, inserts, sends, and pan controls. Same thing on the iPad app. Uh, you can click on dynamics, and any dynamics you've got assigned on that page, uh, or on that channel, I should say, uh, now has knobs assigned left and right. This is why the hands so don't block the screen. So now you have control over those plugins simply by Nice. Attentioning. Yeah, I suppose you because those knobs are in black, you kind of forget they're there, don't you? You do, yeah. I mean, there's a, I guess it's the limitation is you don't get the same colours as the S6, but uh, I think that might reflect the price point as well. Yes, so. yeah. Uh, so, yes, that's uh, instantly selectable on each channel, so that will automatically map to the plugin that's on the channel selected at the top here. And at this easy? point, I'm noticing that you're not looking at the Pro Tools screen, anything like as much. I haven't, you're... no, I haven't at all yet. Um, and yet the so... Pro Tools screen has been dancing around, jumping around, following your every move, yeah, which is great. Yeah, it is. it's worth mentioning as well that the so far what I've noticed is if you're using the Avid uh, channel strip, for instance, as your plug-in, uh, the mapping uh, on these eight knobs is the same as you would get on the master unit on the S6. So it's very familiar territory. So if you want to do your low mid gain, uh, you can easily assign that or you have it already assigned to the correct place. Cool. Um, also, worth mentioning is 
you now have a surround panel. Mm. Post guising, I appreciate that. Exactly, yeah. So uh, those familiar with the artist control might uh, be familiar with the fact that the panner on that control is a circular panner, which meant it was very difficult, impossible to uh, get into the uh, corners. Hard left, hard right. Yeah, into yeah. the hard corners of the panning. So now that gives you much more tactile control and definition to the speaker array. Uh, you also have a zoom function for that, so you can get in a little bit more detail if you needed to. Nice. So again, these are all uh, channel attention uh, functions. Uh, you've got groups on there which allow you to actually assign uh, and edit groups without having to go to the group menu in, in uh, Pro Tools. Okay, so those familiar with the artist control will notice in the soft key page that you have the same layout that you would have done on the touch screen of the artist control. So again, familiar territory for some that have used it, but it gives you quick navigation to functions like uh, your automation for preview, uh, punch, auto latch. Um, you can also nip back into there and go to any editing tools quite quickly. So again, if you've had an artist control, you're very, very familiar with this, uh, and it's literally just been pulled straight out of the artist control mm. and put into the iPad app. Again, this functionality isn't really anything to do with the dock. This is actually just the iPad app's new functionality. So I'll just go back to the channel strip, so we'll keep on that for now. Uh, and I'll take you through some of the other functions that can um, uh, be useful with the iPad in conjunction with, say, an S3 and a dock together. So I've got some layouts here that are just created using the Yukon app, which I'll show you up here on the screen. Predefined ones for this session. So I've got my layouts for uh, easy navigation through the tracks in this quite large post session. Uh, so I can just swip, switch through and uh, although you can't see this on the S3 at the moment, it is actually changing the uh, channels. So again, familiarity or familiar functionality um, or similar functionality with the S6. Uh, although a slightly different workflow with the way you create layouts and access them. So I'll just take you through some of the actual functions of the dock now. Um, first of all, you have this attention fader, which as I mentioned earlier, if you select a track, either in channel view or in tracks view, that fader will follow. So you can have that there. Uh, the other additional function you can do with that is in the workstations, uh, sorry, in the general preferences, you have the option here where the S3 or the dock becomes the VCA master. At the moment, I've assigned it so that the dock becomes the VCA master. So if I have VCAs in my session, I've, 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 I've uh, activated the VCA spill, I can now have the VCA master on the dock and all 16 faders on my S3 would be available. Sweet. So you don't lose one on the S3. So it becomes a, a, a VCA spill master, which is quite a handy. Uh, Obviously, you've got your select and record and also your automation active buttons for those, that channel with the solo and mute on top. Uh, then you also have this jog wheel, which, uh, to be honest, is considerably better than the uh, artist transport that I used to have before. Previous jog wheels. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, very nice feel to it. It's quite, quite a weighted uh, wheel on there. So, so I don't know if you can hear that, but you've got... Um, pretty good scrub and shuttle functions. I'll come into that a little bit more because it has some dual functionality with these buttons along the side. So, Okay, so we've also got a transport section on the dock which again follows similarities with um, uh, the S6. Uh, basic uh, transport controls you'd expect with fast forward, rewind, stop and play and record. You've also got a loop uh, on and off in Pro Tools. You've also got uh, return to the top of the session I could return to zero. Uh, you also have with the shift function held down or latched as it does there. You also have a back and play function, which again for most post uh, guys will be familiar with that uh, predetermined amount of rollback and then automatic play. Uh, you also have the pre-roll settings, record mode, and uh, loop record function if the shift's down. 